My next guest has been a longtime critic of compliance with federal Real ID legislation. Joining me in the studio is Senator Warren Limmer. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Most people think that Real ID is simply about getting on an airplane, but you say it's much more than that. So what are your concerns? Well, the proponents have made it into that. That's the consequence if we do not go forward. But let's look at the underlying language. It was passed by Congress in 2004 in the dead of night. There was no recorded vote, no committee scrutiny on it. Uh, amendment out of the blue. It got into a military appropriation bill, and that's how we got stuck with it. Uh, the, this was motivated by vendors and lobbyists that wanted a national ID card for the last 20 years, and they finally had their opportunity to slip this bill in without all the scrutiny that it really takes. Now every state is stuck with it, but what, did, what are we going to buy into? We give up all of our authority to change or expand the use of that card for any and all purposes, and it's given, Congress gave that authority to the Homeland Security Director. Only he can expand the purposes and use of that card. Is it going to be used about to scan for purchases? Uh, are we going to be taxed according to the scanning when we buy gasoline and then we can tax ourselves due to the pollution we create? Uh, like I said, is it going to be used for firearm purchases? How much ammunition you buy? What kind of caliber do you have? Uh, federal government will finally have the list of all the gun owners in this country. Right now, it's retained by the state. So uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of questions, a lot of open-ended authorities, and I don't think most people know what they're really getting into. All they care about is the convenience of getting on an airplane. Well, so Minnesota is among the slowest to adopt this measure. Other states did share your concerns, and over time, those, a lot of the concerns mm. have sort of been alleviated. For example, according to MinPost, no major national database has yet been set up. So, I mean, you're talking about concerns of yeah. there being a national database that it, they can reach in and find, but that's not it, actually the case it yet. It never was designed to have a national database. Each state would hold it, hold information on whatever the Homeland Security Director says they should hold, and then government employees from state to state can inter-network around into other states. And there's nothing that prohibits the federal government from making a data sharing contract with states either. So they can, they can legitimately say, we will not hold the data. Why would they want to hold the data and go through all of that expense when they are, are making every state comply with spending money for every database in every state? So uh, it, it's kind of a false red herring when you hear that there's a national database. There is none, but there is a hub to intercede, to interact with other states. Other employees can potentially grab information from our state. We're a highly protective state when it comes to our citizens' privacy. Other states do not have that. What happens when that information is shared with another state and they abuse it? We cannot enforce our state law in a different state. So I think it makes a huge difference of the security of data that our citizens have come to enjoy in the state of Minnesota. It may not be that way in the near future. Well, speaking of data security, many Americans routinely give up all kinds of data, mm -hmm. cell phone use and shopping and convenience. Yeah. Is the government less trustworthy than private business? You know, I was talking with Jim Harper from uh, formerly of uh, uh, some of the more conservative uh, think tanks yeah, around. Yeah, he's from and, Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. And he, uh, he, was, he, he and I were talking about it, and I said, what's the connection? He said, and, and we were talking, and we came to the conclusion that the Real ID system, the database that other states are going to collect on its citizens, is kind of the one central technological glue that other, all these other informations can be plugged into. And if that's the case, then this is far beyond any of our imaginations of what it could be abused uh, for. And all sorts of information, not only your motor vehicle driver license, perhaps your medical records can be attached to that. Uh, all sorts of things, uh, purchases and certain products that the government wants to keep an eye on. Uh, how much alcohol do you buy? Uh, how much tobacco do you buy? Be you know, are you being taxed accordingly to the sin tax that we should collect on you? all sorts of things, but the real ID technology is 
now going to be carried in your pocket in your driver license form. It just has a veneer of a state driver license image on it, but the card itself will begin to hold more and more information. Eventually, we fear that the magnetic strip will be replaced with an RFID chip to hold even more information on you. So you're saying this is a slippery slope? It's um, a definite, and it's the technological infrastructure to put it all together. In the most recent judiciary hearing, there were testimony from businesses and business groups saying that noncompliance is already hurting business in the state. What do you say to those concerns? I, I don't know how it can be hurting any business when we don't require it in the state right now. Uh, the airlines are still flying. Uh, people are still coming and going. Businesses still are starting up businesses, and some are leaving, not for <laughs> real ID purposes. So I'm, I find that to be a really hard stretch to imagine that people are, are concerned with it. After all, the federal government has given one of its 12th or 13th extensions on the real ID program mm -hmm. now. So uh, it's illegal to be exactly where we are. As you talk with colleagues in the Senate, are there others who share your concerns? And what do you think happens if we still continue not to pass real ID uh, legislation? There are others that share my concerns. They're very concerned about how far does this technology go. And we can't pull the reins back on it once we sign the contract with Homeland Security. That director now is in charge. Congress is not in charge. They ceded that authority over to the director. That means your vote in Congress, your representative vote on this area of governing is no longer representing you. It's now in the hands of a political appointee as a director or, or coming from or through the uh, Homeland Security Office, which is a division not of the Justice Department, that's a division of the White House. Mm -hmm. So it may just be a little more politically motivated than policy make it, made. And so I'm very concerned about that, and irregardless of whoever would be president. Senator Limmer, we have to stop now, but I want to thank you so much for your time today. You bet. Thank you.